hey, it's me, Roxanne Greenwich. I'm Ezekiel and Ariel Brown's grandmother, and I am a legal assistant, marketing careers project manager, paralegal owner of a sole proprietorship, uh, registered in Pennsylvania, U.S. Department of Treasury, as an internet company providing administrative services which have grown into solutions for federal crime victims created by official corruption, fraud, and civil rights crimes, which do impact community, enhance quality of life, and we're finding innovative reform of U.S. economy, education, judicial accountability, prison, and public safety reform. Okay, so the purpose of this video <coughs> is to address <coughs> some things that I'm noticing about the community of reform, about the collaborations which are necessary for us to come together and network while at the same time protecting ourselves from someone who may not have the same agenda that we do or uh, work according to the same methods that our principles and our morals would um, abide by. So. What, the point I want to make is Facebook is a social networking site. It is powerful for us finding out about each other. It's powerful for us being able to post our opinions and share important and pertinent information. However, Facebook is no place to do business. Uh, an authentic, legitimate business owner must protect the bottom line. Uh, paralegal, any business owner must um manage time and billing, how much billable time, what is their time worth in terms of uh, our credentials, what are we uh, credentialed to do, what are we licensed to do, what are we able to do, uh, so that we don't suffer uh, first false allegations, uh, first so that we don't do something that we're not uh, licensed and authorized to do and uh, could possibly cause harm, and second so that we can protect ourselves from uh, inaccurate or accusations that say that we're practicing law without a license or doing something that we're not supposed to do. So um, we have to first know who we're accountable to, who we got our credentials from, and we have to back to back to this very important thing. In order to give back to community, in order to enhance community, all businesses do. All the huge corporations they give back to community. You know, they're, they're well funded. They're able to do it. Um, however, the small entrepreneur, the small sole proprietorship has to be resourceful and very prudent in how we give back to community. But we do have to give back to community because it's the community from which we're drawing our in the trenches data. We're drawing the claims intake. We're taking those assessments, those verifications of claims and we're referring them into um, U.S. economy impacting uh, exposure and earnings competitive processes. Litigation is an industry. Criminal justice is an industry. Courts transact business. So we have to be a paralegal, me, Roxanne Greenwich, a, an owner of a business that provides internet uh, rendered administrative services must be compliant with the courts, must be compliant with any law enforcement criteria for the purpose of referral or reporting crime or asking for an investigation, and uh, we must be compliant with our clients, our claimants, who choose to take us on, who choose to retain us or ask us for services outside a retainer agreement. We must um, honor and respect the highest levels of professional standards of conduct for their their confidentiality needs, or their market exposure needs, or their holistic career assessment needs. So I just wanted to do this um, video to explain to you that when you call me, right, you may have got seen me on Facebook, or you may have gone to my website. When, I know a lot of people don't like to read the small print. But the small print for us is important because we have to protect ourselves. And the only way a professional services company, a law firm, 
a paralegal, a legal support service that provides support services, court reporters, transcriptions. The only way we can protect ourselves is if we have a contract. If we have something that says you authorized us to do what you asked us to do and that you agree to these payment terms and conditions and terms and conditions of contract conduct. For me to retain me, we already recognize a way to give back to community is to provide standard access to legal assistant, marketing careers, project manager services, professional services on a uh, accessible rate of $1,500 for 45 calendar days to have access to a legal assistant between the hours of 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. Eastern, seven days a week, works out to below minimum wage. Well, access to do what? Access to assess your claim, verify your claims, for you to produce all the documentation, witness testimony, a legal assistant can interview your witnesses and add to that, add to uh, your witness testimony, document everything, prepare what would be in a, what she would have done for her law firm uh, employer, a trial prep binder or what I like to call index of exhibits, which many times are necessary when you get to the point of a pro se lawsuit, of a, of a lawsuit of any time. And we don't exclusively service pro se indigent clients. We service uh, many businesses. We service uh, groups of clients. My, if you look at my contract, one to two people can hire me or three to four people can hire me. All right, because many people have similarly situated claims. And yes, we take that data and we uh, prepare the pro se lawsuit perhaps on a federal level. We answer for you in state court or see whatever it is that you're trying to do. When we say that we answer for you, we don't sign anything for you. What we do is research the local rules, the district court local rules, any chamber practices or individual rules of practice that that particular judge may have. We abide by them. We look at the federal rules of procedure and the federal rules of evidence and we give our expert witness report as to the documents that we review and the witness testimony that we were able to verify. One of my certifications is evidence gathering, depositions, and expert witness testimony. So we look at the integrity of the data. Now, once we actually file that Department of Justice claim for damages, uh, personal injury, um, disability or wrongful death caused by the employee or employees of a federal agency. Once we actually um, once we actually produce the document for you and you sign it and you file it right as a pro se claimant, or we are contracted by the law firm to research and uh, help prepare, draft, and edit their documents. Once we do that for the pro se litigant, the federal crime victim, not the law firm, because any law firm or investment banking firm or business that hires us, we abide by any confidentiality and non-compete agreement. So the pro se litigant, once I draw up these documents for you, your, say it's a complaint, uh, the first time complaint, uh, nature of suit, personal injury, cause of action, um, uh, perjury or falsification and fraud of identification documents, whatever that is, it's compliant with that court's pro se package. Oh, it's compliant with the court. If any court uh, pro se package is compliant with their local rules of procedure, it's compliant with federal rules of procedure, and it's compliant with that any particular judge assignments, uh, chamber practices, and individual rules of procedure. Okay, that's what we do. Okay, then we take it and we don't wait for a journalist to pick up the story. We don't wait for someone media, sponsorship driven media to pick up the story. We look at the news ourselves. We see what the forming agendas are in elections and campaigns. And we recognize that bipartisan, you see that? Bipartisan collaboration solutions 
for American working class, family, student, impoverished businesses is the answer. Don't vote party, vote right. We're able to impact community now with this data of similarly situated measured individual accountability which identifies the special voter constituency needs of a tragically far too large voter population having voter clout now that once organized can sway elections. The federal crime witness who is created by some sort of official corruption, fraud, and civil rights crimes who decided to become a claimant and register their claims in a public record of federal court. Uh, and then we have our The Docket Never Lies series. Uh, the Administrative Solutions series Docket Never Lies came out of higher lyric servicing being born to serve community. And we share this information. Doc docket Never Lies series says if you just look at the docket, the docket is a scorecard and you of events, and you can actually see where there's a something missing, something deficient, something not recorded. Um, you could see where favoritism was granted uh, for certain parties or where a certain other parties were discriminated against. And you can actually see in certain orders, like we had an order in uh, Fern Brown, Roxanne Greenwich versus Fern Brown Kaplan et al. in the Eastern District, where the judge actually said non-attorney represented and former Paris clients, non-attorney represented clients receive uh, less weight than attorney represented clients. So you can see the discrimination in the docket tells it all, not for the purpose of being able to strong arm the court and make them do anything, not for that purpose, but for the purpose of taking the data into community and the community of the, the internet makes our community global now, but we're concerned about U.S. courts, we're concerned about state courts, we're concerned about municipality budgets, we're concerned about where's the money going, where's the federal funding money going, who's pocketing it, pocketing it, Who's violating children's protective services policies and procedures to put the money in their own pocket? 